Hi, thank you very much for joining me on what I call a sincere take on a very pressing football story. I don't know if any of you have come across uh, this particular story on several media platforms. Let me read a bit of it. Um, it says, I regret ditching Denmark to play for Ghana, Enoch Edukofi. And former Mambo midfielder Enoch Edukofi has stated that he regrets declining an offer to represent the Danish national team uh, in the hope of playing for the Black Stars. Edukofi narrated that the Danish Football Federation wanted to lure him to play for the Denmark team when he was at his peak, but he was only um, eyeing the Ghana because he had already played for the Ghana Under-17 national team. So this is a story that comes quite regularly from footballers. And uh, Edukofi, my own friend and brother, this is an advice to any of you who are awards to footballers in Europe, or any of you who are footballers you would want to train to the highest level. And it is a very sincere take. There is always some bit of pride when you play for your national team. National team as in the country of your birth. Very, very proud moment for every family. And you, you have to understand this when you speak to footballers. There was one footballer who told me, I think we were in Kenya with the Black Stars some time back, and he had just come to play for the Black Stars. I think it, it was his debut. It was a World Cup qualifier or Afghan qualifier. And I met him at the hotel lobby and said, Charlie, I said, we're near Japan to wait. You look very happy. He said, Charlie, the national team, when they call you, when they say you are coming to play for the national team, when they send the invitation to your club and the coach comes to the dressing room to say, this guy and this guy and this guy will be leaving us to play for their national team. The kind of feeling, because people think that, okay, we are in the same team. Out of 30 million people in Ghana, a footballing nation, this guy has been invited. He must be that special. So that's the feeling. When you are invited to play for the English national team, that is the sort of respect and allure it comes with. Same with Ghana national team. Same with Cameroon. Someone, your teammates or the fans are going to Google and see Ghana national team. He's been invited to play for the Ivorian national team. He feels so good, Charlie. He must be incredible. He must be exceptional. They have so many footballers around. Why is he the one they are calling? That is how it feels. Plus the pride of your family members and the fact that the feeling of reaching the apex of your career is to play for your national team. You cannot deny that fact. There is no denying that particular fact. It's established and we know. But we are in a very different dispensation now. That is why I would want to advise footballers, especially those who are 13, 14, 15, who have traveled and have joined the junior sites of clubs in Europe and who want to make it in future. I pray for all of you to reach the potentials you desire. But then, when you have an opportunity, when you ever have an opportunity, an approach, regardless of your age, by any country to play for their national team, you have to weigh the options in a mood of 70 30, especially when you are young. 70 in favor of that country and 30 in favor of the country of your preferred um, destination or country of your choice, the country of your birth, what you call your motherland, where you want to play for. It has to get 30% of that probability of you joining a national team. Don't ever lose an opportunity to switch nationality. The act of showing patriotism is not only by playing for your national team at the highest level. You can show patriotism through so many means. And I say this by referencing players like Gerald Asamoah, who came here upon invitation by the GFA, I think in 2000 or 99. He came and sat on the bench. He felt he wasn't given much opportunity. He went to Germany, naturalized and played at the World Cup, played for Schalke and some top clubs in Germany. He's retired from football, come to Ghana, well-established, built a hotel, recently brought about 50 German doctors to operate um, holding hearts for kids for free in Ghana. There is no act of patriotism than that. Talk about Marcel Isai. Born in Accra, I understand. Moved to France, has a family here, played for the French national team, 
captained the team, played for Milan, played for Chelsea, and, and what have you, came to Ghana, established perhaps the biggest sporting center in the city. He's been living here and going about his duties. There is no acts and sense of patriotism than finishing everything you did and coming back. If you are a kid, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old in Europe, and you find an approach, you receive an approach or offer, you have to, first of all, assess it. But then your option of choosing that country should be higher. Not everybody will have an opportunity of playing for the Black Stars. It feels good. It feels extremely good. I've spoken to footballers and they tell you it is a feeling that you can never describe. We understand. But football is much more about your career development and financial possibility of making it than just patriotism. And you can always show patriotism through other means. The fact that you want to come home because you've been invited to play for the Black Stars, your classmates will come to the hotel and say, Charlie, you've done well. That's enough. That's a great feeling. But imagine, there are so many players who have played for other national teams aside Ghana, and they are making it. You can always come back later and do whatever you want to do for the country. This is even my suggestion. In recent years, countries like Germany have been adopting the mixed breed style of football or approach. They know they are not too talented in terms of skill, and they've been accommodating or adopting players from Turkey, in Messi, Tuzzle, and others. And they started this about 20 years ago. So players from Africa and Ghanaians have had their own share in Jerome Boateng. And they played for them. You cannot play for one national team. There are opportunities. And so even for FIFA, now you can play two or three matches for one country. And when you feel that you don't have an opportunity of playing for them again, in order not to destroy your career and your potential, you can always switch nationalities. So if you decide to play for Sweden for two, three matches and they abandon you, you have a Swedish passport. You can switch and play for Ghana and still maintain your Swedish passport. It doesn't destroy it. Beyond Europe, or let me still stay with Europe, there are players like Alexander Tete who played for Norway, was born in Accra, played for Norway. Nobody knows how many times he comes here. But of course, he has strong bonds here. There is Nigel Kwashi, who played for uh, Scotland now. There is Ampedu playing for Wales. Don't even talk about those who were born there. I'm talking about kids who have been born here. You go to Europe. Sometimes, sometimes I even feel that you have to make the approach. If you think that your national team, it, it is not automatic that you have to come and play. It is not mandatory. You have to think about the future of your family as well. Even if it is, it is the Gulf, and this is where I come to, countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE, Bahrain, they are all trying to adopt a mixed breed because they don't have the talent. Ghana is so blessed. So many footballers in every household in Ghana, there is a, someone who knows how to play football. And the national team is just one. Nobody will have the opportunity of playing. So we have an advantage, a comparative advantage in this field. So I think that we must even, even begin to export footballers in a sense. If they are 14, 15, you can ship them to Qatar. They join a spa academy, like Mohamed Muntari, who played for Qatar at the World Cup. Muntari schooled here at Hamas, did his um, secondary education and everything, and went to Qatar. He was naturalized. He played at the World Cup. There was possibly no way Muntari would have gotten the opportunity of playing for the Ghana national team. But he's played at the World Cup. He comes home regularly. He does a lot of things here. That's also his act of showing patriotism. We must begin to un understand and advise our footballers that the fact that you are playing for Ghana doesn't mean that's the only sort of pride that it comes with to reaching your level of potential as a footballer. Let's try and export more, more of them to Dubai, to Qatar, to Saudi Arabia. When you are 17 and you are there and you get the approach, look at the offer and switch. It always has to be 70-30 for the country that is approaching you and not waiting forever on Ghana. Take Enoch Edukufi, for instance, the player who is the subject matter of this conversation. At his peak, was playing for Marmo, the biggest club 
in the country, played in the Champions League, was in tussle with the likes of Modric and Lampard, always regular in the Champions League, 90 minutes for close to four or five years. How many Ghanaian players have been regular? He's been the king of the Scandinavia, playing for top clubs. But at his peak, there were players like Suleiman Tari, Michael Essien, in the Black Sars. There was no way he was going to break into the team. And for some reasons, even when there was an opportunity, he wasn't invited. They would choose to invite players from second division, from other... So if you don't have that opportunity, imagine a Duke of Sweden uh, playing to uh, Denmark or deciding to switch his nationality to play for Denmark. He wouldn't have taken anything away from him. He's 33 now. No way he will be playing for Ghana. But he's missed that opportunity. Take Kingsley Safo. I reported extensively on this story in 2017 when he was at the peak of his career. 18 years or so, playing for the, one of the top clubs, Mamo uh, was after him. So many clubs in the world, including Cuban Krasnoda, with millions of uh, euros to, for his signature. And there was a letter from the Swedish national team. They even proposed securing a passport for him to switch nationality. They brought him document to sign. And those were the days. At that particular time, because CRP also had invited him. So they tried blocking his invitation by giving him or issuing a Swedish passport to him just to destroy his Ghanaian nationality and further postpone uh, or prolong the, the possibility of Ghana having him. Then all of a sudden, bang, something came up. You say uh, uh, accusations of, um, 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 I mean, sexual offenses in the country and they had to jail him. There are so many things that I don't understand. But we have to speak to our footballers. If you get an opportunity in Ethiopia and they say naturalize for us because we don't have goalkeepers in Ethiopia. If you are a defender, you go to South Africa. They say we don't have giant defenders. You are Ghanaian, but we want you to naturalize and play. You have to. Musa Nari, he was a Ghanaian. I've forgotten the name. His name was Kofi something. He went to Tunisia also. He switched nationality and played for, for one of these um, North African countries. There are so many countries that uh, almost Peganian footballers because we have the reputation. Athletically, we are good. They say because of continental drift. They say, you can always, now I've seen the way, Arago Jamal, former MTS Soccer Academy graduate, he's moved to Liberia, playing regularly in the World Cup qualifiers. That is it. You can always play for any national team. And Yemen society is not like, even army, people are leaving Ghanaian army to join other country. Army, that is the national security issue. Yes, I have a bold thing, so trying to praise you when you play for the Black Stars. But Charlie, we are 33 million. There are more than 10 million footballers in this country. We only need 11 to start at any point. They are Bahrain, Kuwait, Qatar, they are looking for footballers. And if you are lucky enough, and you don't even have to be lucky, we have to target. Or if you are a football agent, you have to target some of these countries. Send your, your, your players there. Look at the, 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 the financial situation of the clubs and send them there. Tell them to excel. Tell them to make approaches. Interviews like, oh, as for you, 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 you don't care. Arrange interviews for them in the country when they are at the top of their, their career. Arrange interviews and say, oh, I, I can play for the national team. I don't care. I will serve wholeheartedly. I, I was born in Ghana, though, but nationality is not about where you are. And I feel that I can play for the Bahrain national team. I've, be, I've become loved in Kuwait. And if, if the Kuwait FA wants me to play for the national team, I will serve wholeheartedly. Play for them. When you do this and they put, I mean, down the, 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 the document for you to sign and switch nationality, you look at what you are getting. For some players that I know, I, I don't want to mention, give them houses to stay in forever, give them free flight to their countries of birth anytime they want to go. These are things that you won't get anywhere. Baby Anjoa, baby Bejo, it is not by force to play for Black Stars at all times, no. You can always come down. You can always come. There are so many players. Yunus Musa 
is now playing for the U.S. national team. But to be honest, Yunus Musa will struggle to fit. And yes, I hear now, near my year, we know how to play football. There are so many talented Ghanaian players scattered by statistics. By statistics, Ghana is what the top top exporting nation in terms of football in Africa, not even Nigeria. I think they've beaten us once when it comes to exporting footballers. We are among the top 10 in the world. Look at Argentina, look at Colombia, look at Brazil, look at England, Germany. Ghana is in the top 10 countries are more exporting footballers. You all cannot fit in the Black Stars. Find other opportunities. Akoto is playing for Togo. There are players who have switched nationalities. I'm saying that even beyond Europe, and when it is Europe, when it is US, when it is Canada, you don't need to think twice. Don't wait for Ghana FA to call you. No. You can start. Get your documents. Play. One, two, three games. If they don't like you, you, you feel that they've abandoned you, you can always wait for two or three years and switch nationality to Ghana. So we must begin to be strategic with our footballers. Spread them. Because Gerard Asamoah has come home and is helping. Nisai has come home and is helping. A lot of them are coming home. Memphis Depay is coming home and helping. Everybody can serve in various ways, regardless of where you played. Minim Dentia, Mikasa, I'm saying this for a reason. You meet some of the players and the senior, try Nayenya Black Sanibi Mo, and you can see that this player is in possibly Thailand. He's the best player in Thailand. There is a player who is a top scorer from Ghana, now or Boni League, or Nepal. Black Stars are born. In Nepal, he's always in the front pages. Switch nationality. Look at the money on the table. Look at your future. Switch it. Nationality and patriotism is not only about you playing for your national team. No. You can do other things. When there is an opportunity, I'm not saying don't come. When there is an opportunity and you are called by Ghana, fine. Like Inaki, he waited on Spain, even played for them at a point. He didn't come again. He came to Ghana. But don't make it say Ghana is the first choice. No. Unless, of course, you know you have your way cut out. You have your plan set. You know somebody at the FA who is always going to give you the call or you know a coach who will give you that call. If you are excelling in the golf, we, have, we must be strategic in exporting more players there. If you are excelling in a minor league in Europe, and the players there, Moldova, I'm not talking, Serbia will not even naturalize you, except you are too exceptional. I've heard stories like this from Prince Tegu and other players. They were being courted to naturalize. Kofi Dankwa naturalized for Niger. He's a top player there. There are Ghanaians who have naturalized for Niger. Some of you are missing out. Even in Africa, so many nations are in, in, in rush to have Ghanaian players. Not Omunkwa, European countries. Omunya will be a free Ghana. They like it. Germany, England, Spain. Obi Omunya Omope. They know the athleticism and power of Ghana. That makes, you know, they don't have. So if you have this talent, don't wait and call journalists. You perceive about black side at all costs. No. Don't regret. If you get that opportunity, take it. Think about your future first. Don't think about the pride and. Uh, you are coming to Ghana at the airport. No. Think about what you do after age 35 when you are no more in your pride. If you naturalize for Qatar, they give you a house, they give you a car or cars. They are going to pay you your pension, everything. They fly your family when you want. They give you tickets to come to Ghana when you want. What else? What else? People are switching from Ghana to join the U.S. Army, join the English Army, whatever. It's about life and, and what you want to do in future. You can always come back and do your acts of patriotism, commitment to the nation. It's not only through football and playing in the Black Stars. So this is an advice to those of you who have kids who want to play football to the highest level. Don't ever regret saying, I had a letter from Lithuania FA to switch nationality when I was 17, but I was in my prime. And Black Stars are bigger than Lithuania. So I said I was waiting. Charlie, I know what I'm talking about. For those of you managers of young players, you need to be strategic. Spread them across, spread them across. There will always be people to play for Ghana. If you have the opportunity, spread them across. Cut a four people. 
by ring voting, Kuwait voting, go to those countries, Libya, Omope, would they just go there, switch nationality, get the secure the back? Then we have to start thinking about how to help. We can support the blacks as it goes. Thank you.